In this video, we are going to graph higher degree polynomials using different characteristics, including degree, leading coefficient test, and it mean the value theorem, and the zeros. First, let's discuss polynomial graphs. First, um, a polynomial graph is going to be a continuous function. However, if you notice, it cannot have a sharp turn as if over here on the right-hand side. So because of this sharp turn, this would not be a polynomial graph. This is actually an absolute value function. And the reason this is not a polynomial graph is because there is a jump. It is not what we call a continuous function. It does not flow completely through the entire graph. And so a polynomial would be the two that would be on the left-hand side. Now, steps to graphing polynomial functions. First, you're gonna look at the degree which we will discuss. For example, like x to the fifth plus 3x to the fourth plus 2x minus 10. The degree of this function would be five. We discussed it many topics ago, but just as a refresher, the highest degree would be considered the highest exponent. When you say degree, you're basically looking for the exponent. And then leading coefficient, for example, in this, the leading coefficient will be the number in front of the highest exponent, number, So in this case, it would be a one. And then you're looking for any x-intercepts, which x-intercept is the same thing as a zero, or is the same thing as saying the root of the function. So x-intercept is the same thing as a zero, and it's the same thing as a root. So just know that these three things mean the same thing. Y-intercept is where it crosses, again, the y-axis this time and so we are going to use these steps in order to be able to actually graph functions first you need to recognize what the parent functions look like so if the highest degree is even meaning you have an x squared you have an x to the fourth an x to the sixth an x to the eighth an x to the tenth that will both go in the same direction okay if the left side goes up then the right side goes up. If the left side goes up, the right side. Again, if the left side goes up, the right side goes up. Odd functions, x to the third, x to the fifth, x to the seventh, are gonna go in opposite directions. When one is going up, the other side's going down. Again, when one's going up, the other side is going down, and so forth, that side's going down. And what's happening in the middle is it kind of flattens out the higher exponent you go, but again, if you think in behavior, you're thinking that it's going in opposite directions. So speaking of in behavior, if the coefficient is positive, then it is going to go, so for example, if I have a positive x like to the third, that means as x is heading to infinity, all of these infinity numbers, as it's going really, really big, the y value is also getting really big. It is going up to infinity. As x is approaching negative infinity, meaning as x is heading towards really big numbers, then the y value is going down, which means it is heading to negative infinity. Now, you can see it like that, or you can see it as it's saying f of x. If the link coefficient is negative, the opposite happens. As x is approaching really big numbers, the y value is heading down, which means it's heading towards negative infinity. And as x is going towards really, really small numbers, negative infinity, then the y values, the graph, is going up to positive infinity. Now, if the end behavior is even, you notice that both the left side and the right side are both going up, and if the lean coefficient is negative, for example, like negative three x to the fourth, then both the leading, I mean, I'm sorry, both sides are going down. So again, if you have like a positive three x to the fourth, as x is approaching infinity, meaning really big positive numbers, then the y is going up, approaching infinity. 
if x is going towards negative infinity, heading towards negative numbers, the function is still going up. So it still should be a positive. Same thing over here. As x is approaching infinity as it's going um, towards positive numbers, then y is approaching negative infinity, it's going down. And as x is approaching negative infinity, going towards really, really negative numbers, the function is also still going down. So it's going to be happening, um, it's going to be going in the same direction, no matter if you're going to the left or if you're going to the right. So in behavior example, if I was to ask you, describe the in behavior, you're going to look at two things. You're going to look at the leading coefficient and you're going to look at the degree. The leading coefficient is negative 5 and the degree is 4. So when you think of the degree being 4, think it is an even number, which means it is both going up on both directions. However, it could also be going down. And because the leading coefficient is negative, that means it is both going down. So I know, I don't know what's happening in the middle, but I know because of the negative, both, it is going down on both sides. And so it is gonna look something like this. Again, we do not know what is happening inside the middle yet by, I mean, we could, you have to graph it like on a calculator or use the zeros to figure it out. But we do know that as X approaches infinity, the Y value is approaching negative infinity. And as X approaches negative infinity, remember this is infinity, this is negative infinity, then the y is still approaching negative infinity, and this would be your final answer. Note, there is one other way they may write it. They may write it like this. As x approaches infinity, the function approaches negative infinity. They could use the function notation instead of just y, so just be on the lookout for seeing either one of these. So, now this in behavior example is different because above this was in standard form, what we call standard form, where you have the highest degree down to the end. This is what you would call factored form. Because all of the, um, these are all in factors of parentheses. So in order to figure out the leading coefficient and to figure, to figure out the degree, you're going to need to count the x's. So we have two x's here, and I have one x, but I have it to the third power. So I have two x's here, I have three x's here. So that means I actually have an x to the fifth. Again, it's because I have an x squared, and then I had an x, but it was raised to the third power because of this multiplicity. An x squared times x cubed gives me x to the fifth. And then you're looking for a coefficient. This x had a 1 in front of it, this x had a 1, so the lean coefficient is a 1, because 1 to the third is still 1. So therefore, I know that this is a 1 x to the fifth. x to the fifth looks like this, and it is positive, which means we don't flip it, and so I know that this is the direction. Don't forget, this is infinity, this is negative infinity. So, as x approaches infinity, the function or y approaches infinity as well. As you're going to the right, it's going up. As x is going to the left, the function is going down, and so it would be negative infinity, and that would be your answer. Turning points is another 
um, definition, definition that you could use in order to be able to graph stuff. So turning points, the graph has at most one minus n turning points. What it means by that is if I have an x to the fifth, then five minus one is four, which means it would have at most four turning points. If I had an x to the ninth, then nine minus one means it would have eight turning points, turning points at most, meaning it doesn't have to have eight, but you can't have more than that, meaning if I have an x to the 10th, that means I cannot have 11 turning points. It's not possible. I can have 9, 8, 7, 6, but I cannot have more than that. And a turning point is when the graph is physically moving from left, I'm sorry, from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. So like for example, this graph is decreasing and it turns and increases. This would be a turning point. And now it's increasing and then decreasing. This would be a turning point. And then it's decreasing to increasing. So this would be a turning point, which means in this case, there are three turning points, which means this graph is going to be an x to the fourth or it could be higher. It could be an x to the 6 or x to the 8 or so forth. It could be higher. It can not. We know it's even, by the way. How do we know it's even? Because it's going in the same direction. But we know that it cannot be an x squared because an x squared can only have one turning point. Remember, n minus 1, 2 minus 1. So I know that this cannot be an x squared. That means it can only be one higher or more. So since there's three turning points, that means it could be an x to the fourth or an even number than that. Again, how do we know it's an even? Um, because the direction of the endpoints is going in the same in the same direction. So for example, Determine the number of endpoints and therefore the least degree possible. Okay, so it turns from here to here. It turns from here to here. And it turns from here to here. Okay, that is three turning points. So just like we said, that means the least degree possible is going to be an x to the fourth. Could it be an x to the sixth? Yes, but they said least degree is an x to the fourth. It cannot be an x squared because there's too many turning points. I also know that it's going to be negative in front. Like I know technically this is going to be a negative x to the fourth. Why? Because the end points are both going down. So I do know that it's going to be negative, but that's not what they asked. They only asked for what would be the least degree. And then we have multiplicity. Again, we've discussed multiplicity. If the multiplicity is odd, the graph will just cross through. If the multiplicity is even, it will bounce. We discussed um, that in the last couple of topics. So first to find all the zeros, I notice that there is an x squared in common. And if I pull out an x squared, then I'll be left with an x squared minus one because I pulled the entire x squared out. And now that it's in factored form, I can set both of these equal to zero which means I'll get x squared equals zero, which that's the same thing as saying x That's the same thing as saying x equals zero with the multiplicity of two, which means that is gonna bounce. And then we have x squared minus one equals zero. So I can add one to both sides and then I can take the square root of both sides and I will get x equals plus or minus right because of a square root. And the square root of 1 is 1. So I know it crosses at 0, it crosses at 1, and it crosses at negative 1. Now, I'm going to put that there because 
I'm going to remind myself, hey, that is a multiplicity. It is going to bounce through there. But at 1 and negative 1, it's just going to go through. So here's what you do. Highest degree, it's even. Okay, that means it's going to, and it's a positive um, leading coefficient. So I know that it's going to go up on the left, and I know it's going to go up on the right. So this will help me to know where to start. Since it's coming from up here, I know it's going to go through this. It needs to turn to head to the zero, but at zero, we just said it bounces. So I'm going to bounce off, and then it needs to go back through one, so I need to turn it, and it goes back through one, and that is going to be my answer. This is just a sketch. We do not know how low it should go before it starts turning. That part doesn't matter right now. Right now, we're only dealing with zeros and how to graph. Now, this is um, more of a specialized case, and we'll talk more about this um, in future math courses, but there is something that um, I want to notice, I want to teach you about multiplicity being odd but more than one, meaning, in this case, this is already in factored form, so I can automatically set it equal to zero. So I get x cubed equals zero, which means x equals zero with a multiplicity of three in this case, okay? Multiplicity of three, that is an odd multiplicity. And then you have x minus two quantity squared, which means x minus two equals zero. So x equals two, but it was the squared. So it's a multiplicity of two. So here's what happens when you have an odd number. We know it goes through, but it's a multiplicity of an odd number, meaning greater than one. So what happens at zero and then what happens at two, okay? Now, we know that there are three x's here. There are two x's here because of the multiplicity. So I know that this is an x to the fifth. So I know it's gonna go up, but down here it's gonna go down. So I know it's gonna go through that and also know that it bounces here. So since I'm coming from the bottom, now here's what happens. It goes through zero because it's odd, but this multiplicity of three, it does something weird. It looks like it's gonna bounce. So I'm gonna start curving, but it's actually gonna curve in the opposite direction through that number. And I'm gonna turn back down to two and at two because this is an even multiplicity it is going to bounce off and head up so again when it's an odd multiplicity it goes through but because it's a multiplicity of three it actually is going to do this thing to where it looks like it's going to bounce but then it's going to curve in the opposite direction So let's sketch a graph. We're going to talk in behavior first. In behavior, think of the degree is an x to the fourth, which is an even degree. That means it is going to go up. It's going to end up, the in behavior is heading to infinity on both sides. Now let's look at the zeros. I can pull out an x cubed and I'm left with 3x minus 4. Now that they're in factor form, I can set both of these equal to zero. So I'll get x cubed equals zero, and I'll get 3x minus 4 equals zero. So I'll get x equals zero, but it is a multiplicity of three, and I'll get x equals four thirds. So I know at zero, something interesting happens, and I know at four thirds, which is roughly about there, it goes through. Okay. Now, because of my x to the fourth, I know I have to start up here. So I'm gonna go down, but this is where I have to be careful. This is a multiplicity of three, which means I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna look like it's gonna bounce, but because it's odd, I'm gonna turn and make it go in through and basically 
turn back. And now I need to turn and I need it to go through four thirds. And that is gonna roughly be a sketch of this graph. Now, this is specialized in the fact that I'm gonna give you some information about what we know about the graph and then we're gonna to attempt to sketch it. We know the zeros are at negative one, at three, and at five. And then they tell us some other things. They tell us that at negative two, um, it is a negative number. We don't know what negative number is, but at negative two, it has to be somewhere down here. And at f of two, here's where x is two, it also has to be crossing somewhere down here in the negative. f of four, is up here, it crosses somewhere down the, um, it crosses up here somewhere because it's positive. And x to the six, it's positive. Okay, so we've got to sketch through this. So before I ever reach negative one, I know that it's coming from a negative number. So I know that it's going up like that. Now, in between negative one and three, it cannot cross the x-axis because there were no zeros. They already told us what the zeros were. And I know that it has to be back negative down here, which means it must have bounced to get back into some negative. And now I'm going to turn because it has to go through three. Why? Because it's positive on the other side. It's positive up here. But I could turn and it go through, but it doesn't do that because on the other side of five, it also has to be positive, which means it's gonna turn and it must bounce in order to head back to a positive number on the other side. And so that is going to be a very, very ugly, rough sketch of this graph based off of this characteristics. Okay, so let's review. Okay, so let's review. We are going to graph and find all of the information that we can on this. So first, this is in factor form. Again, just up here, just FYI. A standard form is going to look like an x to the fourth, minus like 3x cubed plus x squared minus 10x minus 1. A factored form is going to look like x times x minus 3 times x plus 4 squared times 2x squared plus 1. Factored form, you're basically putting them in all parentheses. If it's in standard form, the highest degree is that. But in factored form, you need to count the x's. So you got to look at there's 1x, there's 1x, there's 2x's here, and there's 2x's here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That would have been an x to the 6 if you were to FOIL all that out. So this is in factored form, so you need to first count the x's. I have x here and an x here, and you have to look at the multiplicities. So this is an x squared, this is an x squared, which means the highest degree is an x to the fourth, which means it is an even degree, which means I know that it's gonna go up as you go to the left and it's gonna go up as you go to the right. The leading coefficient was positive, so that's why I knew it went up on both sides. Next, we either going to use their factors or send that division to find the zeros. Because of the factors, I can go ahead. This one half doesn't mean anything because if you set one half equal to zero, one half can never equal zero. And so I'll have x minus two equals zero, and I'll have an x plus three equals zero. So I'll have x equals two, but that is a multiplicity of two, 
and have x equals negative 3. And again, that is a multiplicity of 2 because of the square. So I know that at 2, it is going to bounce because of the multiplicity. And I know that at negative 3, it is also going to bounce because of the multiplicity. So now we're going to sketch. We know that we're having to come from up here because it's next to the fourth. So we are going to go down, but at negative 3, it's going to bounce. And then at 2, because it's a multiplicity of 2, it is also going to bounce and then head back up. And that would be a very, very rough sketch of your graph.